The arena shooter genre is something I've talked about, whether it be specific games in mind or just the subject in general. I've talked about its decline, its potential, and I've talked about a select few games like Reflex Arena, Cube 2, and Zygnotic, which are absolutely fantastic arena shooters that need more attention. But like always, I'm always on the hunt for more underrated projects. Stuff that doesn't have enough coverage or none at all. Which is where this video will be coming in. Some you'll know and some that you won't. And as I discover more shooters in the future, I'll keep making these videos if anything more comes to mind. But for now, here's what I found. Number 1. Open Fortress I'm a huge fan of Team Fortress 2. Getting hooked on it back in 2008 when I had a retail copy of the Orange Box. Over the years though, the games have been blessed with a number of source mods, ranging from weapon skins to maps, character models, and even entirely new games, such as this one. For those that grew up with Quake, what you have here is a happy marriage between the two. You have the timeless art style and personality of Team Fortress 2, and the addicting arena-based gameplay of Quake 3. The classes, the characters we know and love are all gone, and we have now the Mercenary, the default character that has access to every weapon, as well as the civilian, who plays differently somewhat. What makes this game truly stand out is not just the source magic, but also the art style that is inherited. Arena shooters, for the most part, generally have a bland art style and setting that doesn't really have much going on for it. But TF2's late 60s centric setting and Open Fortress's successful application of it makes it stand out more than pretty much any other one that I've played. I would say that Open Fortress, artistically speaking, is the best one out there on the market. But the only thing holding it back here is that the fact that it's not on Steam. Even Fortress Forever, a fantastic remake of the original Team Fortress, has its own page. To get it, you have to go onto its own website and download an application, as well as having Source SDK 2013 installed in order to be able to run it. Not a lot of people play it, but I have managed to find matches here and there depending on the time of the day, and there are active Discord communities out there that try to keep the game alive. I'll provide links for both Fortress games in the description. They are seriously good. Number 2. Q2. Quake 2 is a game that I do enjoy, but it's always been the one in the middle for me, due to it not being as good as 1 or 3. But it has been given some more life support thanks to the remastered version that came out earlier this year. Here, however, is another version of Quake 2 that isn't as well known, but is still worth having a look at. Q2. It was designed to be a modernized replacement for Quake 2 back in the 2000s due to the original not being updated anymore. Q2 would try to swoop in and continue the game somewhat, with updated graphics and gameplay, new textures and models across the board. Graphically, it's aged a fair bit, but still looks decent for what is essentially a fan-made remake of Quake 2's multiplayer. Quake 2 has a ton of mods, even some well-known ones like Action Quake 2, the predecessor to Counter-Strike, but Q2 doesn't get talked about enough, and more people that are interested in Quake 2 should really check this one out as well. Number 3, Quake Champions Doom Edition. I'm of the crowd that enjoys Quake Champions, even at the time when the game would get shit on by a lot of people for adding heroes and abilities. I still thought it was a good game. This one, however, is Quake Champions if it was made using Doom. Due to it being a demake, it's not going to feel quite as smooth, but the gameplay is still really solid and dare I say fun. You have a number of different heroes with abilities and even some fan-made ones, like the Intruder from the game Dusk. You have a variety of different modes as well as remade maps from Quake Champions itself. I love the Doom modding scene and conversion projects like this are the reasons why. You can either play with bots in multiplayer, with people in the server browser, or try it single player mode which is okay but not as good as the multiplayer. If you already liked Quake Champions and want a demake flavor of it then this one is worth trying out. Number 4, Duskworld. I love Dusk. I honestly consider it to be the pinnacle of the boomer shooter genre next to Ultra Kill. These two games that give you so much freedom and movement a lot of customization in the gameplay and UI system have a lot of interesting ways to navigate the maps as well as your playtime experience, has great combat and settings to boot. I've played a number of retro shooters that have been good but haven't really made me replay the same game or haven't given me the same impression as games like Dusk and Ultra Kill with some exceptions. Dusk is so good that even its multiplayer is amazing. From a glance, it's pretty similar to Quake 1 or 3's multiplayer, standard deathmatch with weapon pickups and items and power-ups. The only unfortunate thing here though, is that not a lot of people play it, and the only way to find matches is to join the New Blood Discord group or find other people online willing to play with you. The worst part of it though is, is that there aren't even any bots to at least practice on. 
to get an idea for the gameplay and movement differences between the single player and the multiplayer that is, when you can't find people online, you still have bots to rely on, but not in this one. But still, if you can manage to get people together, you have an amazing arena multiplayer experience on your hands. Number five, Revenge of the Cats Ethernet and Terminal Overload. When I see games like this, I get pretty nostalgic about the 2000s era of free online multiplayer gaming. The kind of ones that you could download a client off of or find on the browser. Simplistic in design and looks, but fun games that didn't ask anything more out of you other than to just play and have fun with it. Terminal Overload is the spiritual successor to Revenge of the Cats, but are both similar to each other and can still be played. The games are in the abstract department, from its graphics that appear to stem from looking like a literal simulation, or a different variation from a world like, say, Tron. It also tries to include some unique mechanics such as changing forms when you're in friendly spaces, as well as utilizing weapons that use deflection and direction like the discs in Revenge of the Cats. These games are part of a capsule where games were made for the genuine love of it, a way to exercise unique ideas into genres that needed it. And this was made at a time when the mainstream FPS scene was starving for new ideas. I'll provide links to both of these projects in the description so that you can check them out. Number six, Generations Arena. Quake 3 is amazing, still is, always will be, that is a fact. But what if it was made even bigger, with more weapons, maps, characters, and a ton of other things blended together? Generations Arena is like a celebration of id Software's existence, bringing forth the most influential franchises in the history of FPS gaming into one. In this game, you have classes that represent each generation. There are classes for Doom and each Quake title. You pick the classes based on your preference and then go to town with the appropriate arsenals. Quake 3 has some genuinely amazing multiplayer conversion mods and this is one of them. I love tribute games like this because you can see how much passion is fueled into it. Even the animations from the older games carry over here which only reinforces how much love was put into this project. If you want a celebratory gaming experience done right, then definitely download this one and give it a crack. Number seven, Star Defenders 3D. Now this is a browser one and is written in 3JS, a library for JavaScript that you can use to make games with or web-based applications with. The developers behind this one made it an exercise to implement arena shooter gameplay but coded within a voxel-based environment that's completely destructible. The game supports AI so you can practice with bots, and of course you have online play as well where you can find people. And while there is mobile support, it's generally recommended to run it on your PC instead because of the voxels that are generated. The matches go on endlessly and the colors in the worlds are randomly generated each time you go into another session, meaning you'll get a different map layout each time. It's a fun browser game that has some nice use of physics, the voxels are used quite well without it being a gimmick, just because Minecraft did it. There aren't too many 3JS games and I've played some pretty good ones, but this is one that I would recommend if you're looking for an arena based shooter specifically. If you want something simple and fun and like voxel based graphics, then pick this one. Number 8, Block Quake. Quake 1 still has a strong modding scene for both the single player content and the multiplayer side of things. And this one here is more of a graphical overhaul. It is still pretty much the same game, but with a different flavor in the art style and, you, and it really shows. It recreates the monsters and the weapons and the updates work in the multiplayer as well. If you're playing the remastered version though, just make sure that you turn the enhanced models off for it to work. This is an underrated mod for an already well-known and great game that has stood the test of time still. With a nice graphical change that makes it look more like an indie multiplayer game with some nice you know, lo-fi kind of visuals that don't look way too outdated like the original Quake does. I'll provide a link for this one in the description. I would check it out if I were you. And those were some arena shooters with the last one being a mod for Quake 1 that I stumbled upon. There are lots of these out there that are both games and mods that you can play and they don't have a lot of coverage or exposure nowadays or at all if ever. The arena side though of shooters, multiplayer ones to be exact across the board, are something that is appreciated by a few people, and some games in particular even less so, which is a shame because these are some underrated projects that are worth looking at. Old or new, a fun game is still a fun game. That's why some of these games, some like Xenotic and Cube 2, still have strong communities that have been around for years. If a game is good enough, all it takes is a few passionate people to cultivate a community, and some of these are good enough for that to happen. Thank you for watching.